Hi guys, the following video is requested by one of my Patreons. He wanted me to explain and show a little bit more in detail how SPDs are correctly used and how they are really wired into real life examples. So I'm going through some of my panels here and will show you how I have connected them. I also have the schematics prepared for you. And another thing is I want to explain you also uh, in detail about the clamping voltage of SPDs because there might be some misunderstandings as well. So bear with me uh, if you're interested in this topic. Today again everything you need to know about SPDs and how to use them. Let's just briefly speak about the general idea of using a surge protective device. Voltage surges, which do occur, should be limited to levels below which could hurt our, let's say, electronic devices, etc. The idea is to bring such a surge protective device or SPD as close as possible to the devices which you want to protect. So this is done on different ways and this is then also called the types of SPDs. Types differ a little bit and types means where exactly they are located in our in installations. Type 1 have a general protection and surges which come from lightnings and they should be installed in the main uh, panels at the point of entry of our services. Type 2 gives general protection. Voltages are generally lower than of type 1 and they can be built in basically anywhere in your main panel, in sub panels, everywhere. Type 3 then, those are typically then already built into devices or it's like uh, plugs which have built-in uh, surge protection etc. But the general philosophy is bring the SPD as close as possible to your device you want to protect and then usually you would always put a fuse or breaker in front of the SPD because if the SPD goes short then you want to disengage the SPD from the installation and the breaker or fuse should then blow. Let's quickly talk about the clamping voltage of an SPD because people think that the clamping voltage you see which is written on the module will be kept under control in case of a surge but that's actually not like that and especially if you consider that an AC sine wave the nominal voltage which we have there is just an RMS voltage. So the peak of the sine wave is actually quite higher. So for example on the 230 volt sine wave RMS voltage, the peak voltage is somewhere around 320 volts. So this also is considered when uh, the SPD is rated for AC. So what do we have? Usually we have the rated clamping voltage and of course the uh, SPD will have its maximum uh, resistance there so there will be no currents flowing and then at around UC plus 30 percent resistance will slowly start dropping and when we reach around 70 percent uh, of the clampi clamping voltage then the resistance will drop rapidly down to zero and that voltage will then also be held in check as long as the SPD is uh, capable to pull the currents away. These are typical clamping voltages of the DIN rail SPDs that you can buy. A 275 volt SPD will hold 460 volt as a top and then the next one 385 will be already somewhere around 650 500 
850 1000 volt SPDs they will read around 1700 volts when they fully open and this is already extremely high so always consider this when you try to protect your system to choose a correct SPD. Right, SPD at the service entrance. I have a three phase service here. What do we see? We have our main breaker from the incoming three phase system. And the first thing I do is just behind the breaker, I'm tapping into the three phases, bring them over my protective fuses directly into the three phase three pole SPD and this is uh, going then to ground. Why is there no neutral here? Because this is still TNC distribution. Ground and neutral are one in this uh, main distribution box here and so it's no need to pull down connect neutral as well. Let's take this cluster of inverters here, for example, AC SPD and also DC SPDs for PV systems. You can see here, this is the AC side and here I have the DC side of one inverter. Start with the AC side here on the right. We have the AC input from the further distribution the main breaker two pole neutral goes to the neutral bar and the phase goes to a terminal here we have the individual three breakers from each inverter coming in and all these phase wires live wires are now meeting at our terminal here or at the neutral bar there and the SPD is sandwiched between the main breaker and those individual uh, breakers from the inverters. And we also have L is tapped into our terminal there for all the L's and the N is tapped into the neutral bar there. So whenever there is a surge and it also causes a catastrophic failure of this SPD, it is sandwiched in between the breakers which do then have the chance to disconnect if there is a short. Let's look into the DC side of an inverter. We have here incoming plus and minus from the solar string. The minus will go directly to my minus side of the DC SPD. The plus is going initially to the string fuse and then will go to the plus side of the SPD. And then of course the other wires which are then continuing to the inverter itself. On the down we have on both SPDs these ones have the ground connection here on the down and they are going to the PE bar which is coming here from the house from a, a rod somewhere behind the house. So as I said to you, the SPD should always be as close as possible to the device you want to protect, which are here the inverters. But now I only have one DC SPD right next to inverter, which is this one. The other ones are actually uh, inside these combiner boxes right here. So. I did put it there, this is for convenience reason, the cable length from those boxes to here is not too long. It's maybe around 5 meters. 
but definitely less than 10 meters so yeah ideally all those DC SPDs would be here right next to the inverters but as I said I have a little bit of space issue so I kept them at the area there okay now let's look at the DC SPDs of my off-grid system this now is an example for arrays which are away of the inverter I have three strings on this roof here I have two strings on that roof five parallel strings and the inverter is inside that building there so the cable distance from this one combiner box is here to there is about 40 meters from this one combiner box is there 20 meters so each of these arrays does have its own combiner box and SPD there and each of those SPDs is directly earthed via a ground rod there and the ground rod there in that corner so how does this look at the ARS itself and then later we will look inside near the inverter so this is a very simple DIY combiner box we have plus coming in from the individual solar strings going into the fuse into the string fuse very important when you have parallel strings and output goes to the plus terminal here the negatives are going straight to the negative terminal on this side and the SPD is tapping in into the negative and into the positive here while the ground is connected here on the down this similar configuration is on the other roof and let's look inside the building so this is now the inside panel of the off-grid system the inverter is my must all-in-one this part DC side incoming DC SPD and main breaker and then the AC SPD let's look into the box so DC incoming plus and minus from the uh, solar arrays and here tapped in SPD directly from the input uh, to plus minus and pulled down to the ground AC SPD is tapping into the neutral bar and the other side on the live terminal there on those two terminals of course the inverter is again directly feeding in via this transfer switch here next example is the hybrid system AC side let's open up this panel here the AC is coming via a transfer switch both of these inputs do have their main breaker here two pole main breakers and the output of the transfer switch is again connecting to a neutral bar and to a separate a live terminal here and this terminal will then go into the L of the SPD and the neutral from the SPD is connecting to the neutral bar here I have in this box also installed a type 1 type 2 combination SPD sim similar to the main distribution because this place is now already quite far away from the main distribution board so if there would be some effects of lightning coming into the system on this place uh, it could be caught up here as well PE is going to the ground bar here and this one also have a separate ground rod how is the inverter protected? the inverter is protected by via its input here over the transfer switch so for this SPD it does not matter what the source is if it is the grid, if it is the inverter via the grid or inverter in off-grid mode this will always protect the AC side of the inverter 
is how I have installed my SPDs and I hope it was kind of understandable and visible how the wiring was running. Thank you for watching this video. Please like the video, comment and subscribe to the channel. I see you next time.